that Kit Kats? Oh my goodness. Um, I was just looking at this one painter and my stuff is similar in a way to his things. Um, his, his name is, um, and, and I mean, this is pretty amazing when I'm reading about him, Nicholas Rurich. Now, he does a lot of things, you know, like my angel paintings with the symbology and stuff in it. He does a lot of that type of, of thing. Now, it looks to be a Russian painter, but actually he's from India. He's, he's Indian nationality from up there by Himachal Pradesh, up there in the Himalayas. His wife, Helena, they were um, theosophists, okay? And uh, so they started a school of theosophy of called Agni Yoga, <laughs> okay? Oh my goodness, so such a, a rich history with this painter. And it just seems like my artwork is going more towards that um, same feeling of, of his things. Now he has a few pieces um, out there that I've seen that, that I'm just now going through looking at his stuff and reading about him. I just started reading about him, but he is so interesting says he was born in St. Petersburg to a well-to-do notary public Baltic German father and a Russian mother, okay? But it says he lived, but if you look at his nationality, it says Indian. Now, I wonder if he gave up his, his things. Um, it says he was interested in hypnosis and other spiritual practices and his paintings are said to have hypnotic expressions, so that's interesting. Um, in order, in other words, they carry some sort of a transmission, is what I'm going to say with that. Um, <clears throat> he says that he uh, lived in places of the world until his death in Nagar, in Himachal Pradesh, India. Says he's trained as an artist and a lawyer. And his main interests were literature, philosophy, archaeology, and especially art. <clears throat> okay. Um, very interesting. But if you read his thing, it says his nationality is Indian. But no, really, he's Russian, German, but... I, maybe he gave up his citizenship as a Russian, maybe, and... Um, because he died in India. Maybe he gave it up and became, you know. So it's just interesting, uh, very interesting. It says, uh, he was raised in late 19th century St. Petersburg and he enrolled simultaneously at the Imperial Ar Academy of Arts in 1893 he received the title of artist in 1897 and a degree in law the next year. So, very interesting. I think I have a deck of cards that with his artwork on it, come to think of it. I do. I'm going to drag those out if I can find them today. I do have some tarot cards that have his some of his artwork on it. So that's interesting. Um, it says during the early 1900s, 1910s, that he was largely influenced by his wife, Helena, and developed an interest in Eastern religions, as well as an alternative to Christianity belief systems, such as theosophy. Um, it said they both became avid readers of Vedantist essays of Ramakrishna and Vivekananda and the poetry of Rabindranath Tagore and the Bhagavad Gita. So um, it said they were committed to the mysticism and uh, especially during the war. Um, 
that they were uh, intellectuals and, um, you know, trying to expound on Vedanta and Buddhism and other topics, okay. Uh, but it says he also wrote short stories and poems. And uh, so interesting, very interesting um, about his life uh, and his artwork. He's got a picture up here of his, him and his family in India, Kulu Valley, India. So very interesting. Um, it's got a huge long thing here, which I haven't read. I've just read the beginning parts of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna read some more about him. Oh, I didn't know that they said to have a series of studies on the Himalayan ranges donated by this artist's son, 36 works, and they are in the Karnataka Chitrakala Parishas Gallery. So very interesting. <clears throat> H.P. Lovecraft refers to numerous times the strange and disturbing Asian paintings of Nicholas Rorich in his Antarctica horror story at the Mountains of Madness. Oh my goodness. So very, um, very interesting about this artist. Um, of his uh, Eastern things and leaving Russia and uh, living, winding up living in India and this theosophy and uh, just the, uh, just his paintings, how he brings that into his paintings. Uh, very interesting. Um, so, you know, I'm only three, three minutes and 40 seconds into his collection of 261 works, okay? But I do identify with a lot of that. It, it makes his art make sense to me. Um, so I'm gonna shut this down now and um, watch the rest of this. There's another one over here I think I'm gonna watch later that, oh, I, maybe it's not in English. Um, <clears throat> but it's called Rorik, The Call of Cosmic Evolution, okay? The Call of Cosmic Evolution. So uh, very interesting. I will leave the um, URLs to his paintings, uh, you know, and, and to this information about him, and I'll put it in the description. But very, very interesting painter. And I'm going to see if I can find those cards again today, those tarot cards with his artwork on it. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you online.